and say, hey, here's Tommy. Tommy. Get your daddy and your mommy. Tell your homies all to get in line. It's nine to the morning. And I'm sending out a warning. Because it's time to do the nine at nine. So let's get right to it. Because it's time to do it. Gonna happen, uh, rain or shine. So let's all get together. But before we do the weather, we're gonna jump into the nine at nine. Nine at nine. All right, number nine, I'm sure we all remember Little Hercules. That's what the internet called young oh. Richard Sandrak. He was born in Ukraine, but his family moved to the U.S. when he was two. His father was a martial arts champion, and his mother was an aerobics competitor, and they had him benching 200 pounds by the age eight. Hey. Oh, wow. They moved to L.A. to make it in showbiz, and at around age 16, he did make a little movie called Little Hercules, but his trainer quit around that time and revealed that the way Richard's father was raising him was basically child abuse. Oh, Got pretty ugly, and the father wound up in jail for some other things. The good news is Richard seems to be okay. He's about 31 now, oh. and he stopped working out so much uh, a while back. There were reports he was a stuntman at Universal Studios, but it's not clear what he is doing today. Huh. Wow. Hmm. Pace yourself. Yes. Is the story oh. on that one. All right, number eight, as you can see from this old photo, before telephoto oh lenses, my gosh. photographers Jeez. had to get very close to the That's action wild. on the baseball field. In fact, photographers often got to know players and coaches better than the sports writers who didn't really go into the locker rooms nearly as much as they do today. Uh, this last photo is courtesy of the University of Chicago alumnus uh, Earl Payne. He captured this image right after the first, uh, the Major League's first nighttime pitch at Crossley Field in Cincinnati in 1935. I had no idea that they said no. that or said that wow. close Wow. Okay, cool. Number seven, a travel expert is sharing her tips on TikTok. Her name is Daisy Whitlow, and she used to work for British Airways. So Daisy says people should pack a maximum of 35 items for a trip. Oh, I like that. 35 items. But I wonder how long you know, it how long it is, though, right? Here are her hacks for making things fit. Roll up a pair of socks with two pairs of underwear inside. Fold bras inside dresses and shirts rolled from bottom to top. She says store swimwear in a Ziploc bag. And here's a tip that most people don't do enough. Edit your shoes. People pack way too many yeah, shoes. That yeah. is the truth. Yeah. I'm guilty. Yeah, I'm guilty of that too. They add unnecessary weight to your bag. You probably won't need them or use them. Yeah. You always see the guy at the counter who's, they're telling him, your bag is 53 <laughs> yeah. pounds. You need to get three pounds of underwear right. out of there. And he's looking at his wife. Yeah. Have you ever seen that uh, when they, you know, they, they actually sometimes force you to put the carry-on luggage oh, yeah. in the thing, and these people are trying to, like, stuff right. it in yeah. there to say, like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah it's not going to work. Yeah, probably not. Oh, flying. <laughs> so yeah, much fun. Number oh, six, I'm pretty sure people will have an opinion on this. An investor and tech guy named Sheil Manat posted about a night where all of your friends make a presentation on what they do at work <laughs> and answer questions. I don't know much about what many of my friends do for a living, so he's essentially proposing a PowerPoint party. It's kind of like a game night, except you explain to everyone what your job is all about. A lot of people find the idea ridiculous, but many others think it's kind of cool and say they enjoy learning new things and especially like to know more about their friends and their jobs. I like the idea. Yeah, I yeah. do too. I don't like a PowerPoint, but there's no. some no. way to make it a little bit more compelling. Because <laughs> yeah, I feel like everybody knows what we do because you can yeah, see you it, can but see you know, it, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, I like that. All idea. my friends had these different financial jobs, financial, and they explained to husband, me five like, I times. I, right. I still don't understand <laughs> yeah, what they do. Yeah, I'm with no, you on that. No. Uh, number five, having trouble putting an outfit together. Try a shirt sandwich. Oh, yeah, these are really good. Uh, see, Paul, you, you already knew about I this. About I can't the break any fashion yeah. news to you. We read about it on reclair.com. It's a layering technique a lightweight turtleneck on the bottom, a knit layer in the middle, and a third button down shirt or blazer on top. Sounds kind of warm. It's basically a little trick to make you look a bit more put together. Bonus if you play with different color combinations or patterns. Hmm. All right, number four, coming up in a few minutes, we're talking to the director of the outrageous new movie that fans can't get enough of, Hundreds of Beavers. Uh, so let's share some beaver facts. Uh, beavers secrete a special goo oh. that smells like a musky vanilla. Oh, I love vanilla. Yeah, okay. it's called castorium. Mm. Uh, it's a chemical found in the beaver's caster sacs. <laughs> well, let's not get too personal here. <laughs> it's located under their tails. Oh. The goo itself is kind of brownish and thick like molasses. 
the Romans burned it in uh, their night lamps. Uh, trappers use it to lure animals. Even the FDA approved it to be used in a perfume wow. to add a little bit of a sweet scent. Huh. So how about that? Wow. That'd be a, a great name for a minor league baseball team, the, the Caster Sacks. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, great minds think alike, guys. Take on the Caster Sacks tomorrow. <laughs> <Great. Great. laughs> Definitely buy tickets to that. Uh, number three, Amazon has announced they're phasing out their checkout less grocery stores. There's a lot of hype when Amazon introduced their Just Walk Out technology. You'd scan a QR code when you entered, and uh, then there was no need to check out. They right. said it was just automatic. It gave the impression that it was some amazing technology that Amazon had developed. That magically knew when you were taking it out of the store. But what the tech really was was more than 1,000 employees in India watching you as you walked through the store really? to make sure you were charged for everything. Huh. So they didn't really get rid of cashiers. They, they just moved them offshore and paid them less as they watched cameras all day. I did not know that. Hmm. I thought it was just some sort of like scanner yeah. Yeah. thing or something yeah, like I that. Too. Wow. All right, number two, let's talk about Carbondale. It's the solar eclipse epicenter. You'd normally have to wait 400 years for a total eclipse to take place where you live. And it's unlikely you'd never, you'd see it twice in seven years. That's why conspiracy theorists and doomsdayers have all sorts of thoughts on the upcoming April 8th event. Yeah. They usually do. They believe it could bring destruction or doom. Yeah. A bunch of these theories have been fueled by movies like Leave the World Behind. Yeah. And have absolutely no scientific backing. Yeah. People I like looking, a good conspiracy theory. Yeah. <laughs> it usually ends in doom and destruction, yeah. apocalyptic yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's that's what, yeah. yeah, yeah. Keep it, right. keep it positive. Uh, number one, everyone loves uh, Paul Rudd. Uh, and here's a uh, look at him showing off some amazing camera skills. Take a look. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, well, here hasn't come up with that yeah. yet, you know? <laughs> oh, that's nice. Art boy. Yeah. I'll never look at my hand the same no, way. Yeah. yeah, that was uh that's talent right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. That was fun. That's a nine at nine. Nine at nine. Nine at nine.